the big bottom line is we've got a guest that we're excited to have on tonight, and it's the drummer for the legendary Meat Puppets, and we'd like to welcome Derek Bostrom to the Church of Rock. Hey, Derek. Greetings, listeners. Hey. Greetings, acolytes. <laughs> I'm, I'm here along with uh, my lovely co-host, Sister Tracy. Hi, Derek. Hello, Sister Tracy. Thanks for joining us tonight. We do appreciate your time. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Uh, uh, So the first album is your favorite, huh? You know what? I like a lot of your stuff, but I really have a special fondness because I come from the world of punk rock like you do and stuff, and it's just just really close to my heart. Well, if 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 we're if you're the same guy, I think you are. You used to write us letters back in the old punk rock days, so I remember that. Yes, you and I corresponded, um, and I still saved all the letters. And me and you had a big. Um, we had one thing in common was that we were both and still are Tiny Tim uh, fans. God, I vaguely remember that that you were a, a fan of that. Um, yeah, I got got to meet uh, Tiny Tim back in 1989, and. He had fantasies of, of uh, doing my, my own record with him one day, but it never happened. So uh, anyway, uh, that is a great record. You're not wrong. I like that first one myself, if only because uh, I wrote many of the lyrics. No, that's not actually why I like it. <laughs> um, and I agree with you also that our latest and greatest stuff is definitely uh, almost as good as that first album. No, it's, it's actually much better. Our new album, uh, Dusty Notes, has been out since about March. And... Uh, I noticed that you played Backwater, but maybe uh, you will play me out with a track from that one. Well, you know, what I'm going to do is we're going to do an extra long Church of Rock tonight. We're going to actually go past our normal time. So what song do you think I should play? And I'll definitely do that. From Dusty Notes? Oh, well, I like the Nine nine Pins and Warranty are both great. The first two tracks, I'd say. Sure. Yeah, we'll do a Nine Pins and or a Warranty this evening uh, during the show then. Yeah. So... Ask me the question. What Ask, question. Why am I here? That's my question. What is the meaning of life? Well, uh, you know, it's funny you should say that because uh, <laughs> if, there's, if there's any, uh, any, I don't know about meaning, but I would certainly say uh, that the music uh, makes it a whole lot uh, more bearable. That's for sure. In fact, I have my uh, rehearsal today. Uh, Chris and I and get together every every weekend and, and play since I got back together with him about a year or plus, a year and some change ago. Elmo sometimes joins us, um, and we, you know, it's 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 just something that I've I've really missed. I mean, I was out for twenty years and play music, got back into it. That kind of uh, leads me to one of my questions, actually. All right. And sorry to interrupt or anything like that. Um, it's all right. Uh, but sometimes when, you know, you gave me a cue, I have to take it. And basically, I was wondering, you, you did get back with the Kirkwood Brothers, I believe it was um, 2016. And I wonder why you did not join them at that time. Or was it 2006? 2017 uh, is when we uh, re- uh, reconnected uh, in time to get in the uh, uh, the Phoenix, Arizona. I mean, 2006. When they when they had asked you in two, in 2006, why were you still chronicling the band, but yet you did not rejoin the band? I didn't have time. I had a uh, uh, my 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 actual career would not have permitted it, nor was I real interested at the time. But uh, you know, things change. Okay, now I know. And a lot of it, you know, you you, you uh, the, the the truth is is when we were getting inducted into the Hall of Fame here in, in Phoenix, it's our, our local one. Uh, I was essentially indifferent. Uh, I'm a forward thinking individual, <clears throat> pardon me. And, uh, but so many people at work kept coming up to me and they're so jazzed and, um, <clears throat> it's cute because, uh, people know who I am, <clears throat> but obviously, uh, unlike yourself, they're, uh, afraid to come up to me and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> you know, genuflect as it were. And so, uh, it, once we were, uh, you know, that, that came out that we were going to be inducted, people started coming up to me. I was like, damn, a lot of people care about this stuff. And, uh, well, what, ab- just... what about 2018 when the fans sponsored a petition on moveon.org to initiate you guys to be inducted into the rock and roll hall of fame in Cleveland? Well, What's I up suspect, with that? I suspect you need to actually, um, I mean, they, you can, you can go on the, the rock and roll hall of fame site and nominate anybody you'd like. They can, you know, you can, if enough people are interested, as far as I'm concerned, they don't even have T-Rex in there or Todd Rundgren. You know, I'm okay, you know, waiting <laughs> for those guys. I mean, right. Geez. 
but uh, you know we'll get there eventually i figure uh you know the 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 last uh, gasp of of your Bob Dylan's and Keith Richards will uh, pass away, and then there'll be a uh, you know a a certain amount of editorializing about how rock is dead, and then those of us who are, who are left, you know, me and Anthony Kiedis, will be uh, <laughs> you know will be uh, risen up to the uh, the final <laughs> purveyors of rock and roll. You'll be under me, the under the bridge. <laughs> yeah, me and Anthony. And uh, Jack White will all be considered the new, uh, the new rock and roll uh, legends. But that... no, seriously, I mean, we, I mean, we go out and we, we, we don't play big arenas or anything like that. We're still pretty much at the same level the band was at. Well, let's put it this way: when, when we stopped in '95, the band was at a high level. We stopped at pretty much the highest level, and but we were going to head back to the clubs. It was, it, the, the writing was on the wall. Uh, we're back. And I watched, uh, I mean, that's one of the reasons that, you know, I used to say to myself, well, you know, I'm not in the band anymore, but, you know, they're still playing the same places we played in the 80s. So it's not like it's, uh, <laughs> you know, I've done that. I'm, I'm, I haven't missed too much. Speaking of um, back in like in the 80s or early days, um, Don Bowles uh, of the Germs and many other bands wanted me to ask you something. Yeah, he said uh, he wanted to, to know if you remembered about the band Crazy Homicide, aka the Liars. Uh, play. Well, obviously, I I do remember the Liars, but I don't remember the story as he tells it. Oh, about them playing um, the show just for you guys at that party or at that house? No, what I remember is that uh, now, you know he could be right, I could be wrong, but I remember it differently. Okay. The the uh, the, the 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 consumers and the Liars used to play. In Phoenix, your audiences just couldn't care less about this, but hey, uh, at least it's not swearing. The, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the liars and the consumers are early uh, punk rock bands in Phoenix. Then, you know, they were, this is like 77, 78. I was interested in going to the shows. They were playing bars. I couldn't get in. Um, I even actually went so far as to try to get in. And sometimes it's like, you know, if somebody was around the back in the band, I could get snuck in, but uh, generally <laughs> right. it's not. I, like, couldn't. So I remember writing a uh, hostile letter to the local weekly where uh, the punks were, like, going, well, if you're not coming to our shows, you're just not cool. I'm like, well, I'd like to be cool. Why don't you play someplace that I can see uh, you guys? And uh, I got in touch with uh, some of the, the local scenesters that way. And... Um, was hanging out with uh, the singer from the consumers, uh, David Wiley. And we went back to the house where the, the liars used to practice and they had apparently uh, been refused. This has got to be right. It's what I remember, but they, their show had been canceled. They were not uh, allowed to play for some reason or another. So they came back to the house and played instead for those of us who were sitting around. And I happened to be one of them. Hmm. This was, two years before the meat puppets ever started this would have been like 78 wow um now i pretty sure that don don was already in la uh, with the germs by the time the meat puppets started in 1980 and the liars were no more um so i'm i'm pretty sure that the only person he actually played for was the uh merely the drummer not not one of the more famous kirkwoods so okay uh, he can tell the story any way he likes. I would, <laughs> we, I would be happy to defer to his memory, but uh, something. Um, another um, weird thing well, about that might be. Let um, me just let me just say though, um, if it hadn't been for that show, there may not have been a Meat Puppets because I was absolutely hooked for life. Uh, Don's uh, band, The Liars, were always my favorite band ever, and I was real disappointed when he uh, left town and took up the drums instead of his. Uh, the bass, which he played in the liars. Well, you anyway, you were saying you're like a musical historian kind of guy. You made me these great cassette tapes back in the early or in the mid eighties or early nineties, whatever, with just this great collection of stuff like the liars and the feeders and a bunch of cool underground stuff. And I still have all those tapes and you might not remember, but man, you really were very cool. You hooked me up with some great, great stuff, man. Of, of, of course I remember being very cool. I'm still very cool. <laughs> you are. Um, yeah, no, I, those bands were great. Uh, um, Peter, and all the Phoenix uh, bands, uh, there's a, a good dozen plus uh, classics that all punk rock fans should know. Um, Chris, of course, uh, did a record 
uh, with Don a couple years ago, two or maybe three years ago, called The Exterminators. And that was one of the very first punk rock bands in Phoenix. Don was in it and uh, a couple other fellows that we uh, we knew. Uh, Chris and I were in a band called uh, Victory Acres in the uh, 80s. And the two brothers in that band, uh, uh, Doug and Dan Clark, were also in The Exterminators. And Chris got them back together and uh, um, did uh, did a, a a record with them. So a lot of those songs are still in print. Although I have to uh, confess that my favorite versions are like the 1979, 80, 78 versions, uh, but because uh, they were just so crude and uh, and eye opening. But uh, so yeah, check out that Exterminators album. It's a good one. I don't, you especially should check it out. I will if you have not. If you haven't, you definitely should. Some, it'll be right up your alley. Seriously. And there's something, um, Tracy probably doesn't know this, but she's a big fan of the old Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, what was it like uh, when John Frusciant Frusciante um, tried to audition for the uh, Meat Puppets back in 92? I heard he did. Is that true? Yeah, well, uh, if I remember the first time we played with the Chili Peppers was at, uh, in Long Beach. Uh, I believe the show, the club was called Fenders. And... Uh, they uh, kind of uh, shocked me by before they went on stage, they all got into a huddle and like did some sort of like um, up with people style chant <laughs> to like get that, get their, their heads in the game and to, you know, motivate themselves to play. I was like, huh, these guys are different, different from us. <laughs> right. And, um, you know, but obviously uh, that we became friends and, uh, we did a, a, a hilarious tour with them in uh, in Texas in 1990, and um, it was right on the cusp of this stuff starting to get popular. And uh, I was amazed to find that their crowds were not only huge, but they're full of huge dudes. <laughs> and we would play our psychedelic nonsense, and then we got off stage, and the uh, the skinheads just thrashed to their to their music. I was like, "Ew, testosterone." How <laughs> <Yeah>. cute. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, maybe that's t testosterone appeals to the sister. Uh, that's fine. To each his own. Right. <laughs> um, as far as John goes, uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Pipe down back there. Uh, we uh, we we had John over, and uh, he took the bus. And he brought his guitar without a case. He just kind of had it in his lap. He seemed kind of out of it. Um, apparently, uh, he didn't uh, bother to tune up uh, when we were playing with him. And he, he told Chris, uh, don't worry, I'll just bend the note in. And, um, you know, he, uh, we, we, we always like jamming, uh, obviously. And uh, we like to play with just about anybody. But uh, in that particular instance, it didn't really work out uh, i don't remember the details it wasn't if if, if uh, it would that decision would have been left to kurt and if he had to deliver the hammer blow to john's uh uh hopes and dreams i wasn't there when he did it yeah but uh john has uh, went through some um different i'll say phases throughout his yeah. career and uh you know he went through some rough times i don't know if he was then but he definitely evolved as a guitar player from from the early '90s until until later, his style kind of yeah no I, I evolved and changed, he, which which he does good know. work yeah. But at the time, yes, uh, uh, as you may have inferred, he was going through some some difficult times at the time. I mean, the, this band is no stranger to difficult times, so it's it's not anything we we begrudge anyone. <clears throat> the only thing I really begrudge the, the Chili Peppers, I don't even begrudge them. It was just a disappointment, is we were going to join them in Australia. And I want to say, God, it must have been 91. And um, we, we were going to open for them. And we got to Australia and found out that um, they had canceled their Australian leg of the tour. They what? played Japan. Wow. And during that period, they had uh, fired their guitarist, which may have been John. I cannot remember. That's Possibly. kind of a cruise to go to a gig that's been canceled without anyone telling you about it. Well, this was in Australia too. That's so, what I'm uh, saying. That's a little bit of a, a little wow. bit of a trip to take. Yeah, to you know, you get stuck in a country where nobody speaks the language. Um, anyway, we uh, we quickly set up some uh, dates with the local band, um, the Hard Ons, if you'll pardon the expression, FCC. I remember and, them guys. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and um, 
the uh, just the shows were you know janky and whatever. The only thing that I really remember, aside from uh, really enjoying being in Australia and New Zealand, which was real cool, uh, was that um, the, uh, the 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 hard- I was using we were using their equipment, and the hard ons drummer uh, used to sweat the uh, the drum stool uh, soaked before I would get on. So every night I played in the guy's ass sweat, which oh, didn't didn't care for. <laughs> but um, either way, it's the only time I've ever been to Australia, and uh, you know we. I guess the band's been there a couple of times uh, since then, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll get back there. Wow. What are you, uh, what are you, where are you guys playing next? Are you have any tours planned? Are you guys have any one-offs or what's up with the meat puppets playing out live wise? Well, we just sold out uh, the show at Pappy and Harriet's, which is on November 30th, which is uh, in California up North of Palm Springs. Fun. Uh, and we've got a show the day after Thanksgiving, here in Phoenix, and the, the band has been doing those uh, the day after Thanksgiving for several years now. So it's become uh, what the fans like to think is a, a tradition, but uh, um, they better not uh, make too too much of that, or else we'll uh, stop. <laughs> no, uh, I, I, another, otherwise we're gonna uh, we're uh, looking to do some shows in uh, in the spring. We. Uh, um, we we went to Europe in June and we uh, went up to the East Coast in uh, in May and we did uh, we were just in San Francisco played uh, uh, something called the uh, Hardly Strictly Bluegrass Festival, which was a free uh, festival in Golden Gate Park, which probably had like you know a quarter million people uh, walking through it at any given point, um, and it was also broadcast. Uh, you know, live on, on their website. In fact, that show is still on their website. So wow. if you want to go check it out, um, it's a great show. Uh, I, I dare say the meat puppets know how to rise to the occasion when there's a, uh, ass ton of people in front of us. <laughs> so we like playing those festivals, you know, and obviously, uh, you know, it's, uh, we, we did a, a great festival in Spain, which is just awesome. We did, uh, did another festival. Where was that? Oh, we do. We played uh, Muddy Roots in uh, Tennessee. Oh yeah, which which was amazing. That uh, was that was like a grown up free zone. It was like no lights, no hardly any. You know, just it was just a, a big dark field uh, that we played you know, in front of all these people with sleeping bags. It was very cool. Well, the latest album. If you're listening, you're listening to a chat with Derek Bostrom from the Meat Puppets at KSKQ and the Church of Rock Radio Show. The latest album is called Dusty Notes. Uh, it's been a real pleasure, and it's also been a pleasure to watch the Meat Puppets continue uh, through many changes, of course. But now, having come full circle, we've got the original cats with you know more, of course, Elmo and company. Uh, it's great that you guys are still doing it. Thank you so much, dude, for making the time to be on our show today. We appreciate it so much. And, it's entirely um, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. We're going to play uh, more Meat Puppets after, at the end of the show, we're going to extend the show tonight, and we are going to include some of the Meat Puppets that Derek has asked us uh, from the Dusty Notes. We'll be doing nine pins and or warranty tonight. Yes, Thank absolutely. You. And thanks so much, Derek, for your time. We we do appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, pl- feel free to kick me off anytime you like. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how long your show has to go, but I, I, do, I do tend to ramble. Yeah, we pretty much have, our, our slots usually pretty much like over na- at this point, <laughs> right? Now. Okay. And um, well, that's cool. Well, we, I have a, I have a radio show of my own that I do on the internet radio uh, station. You know uh, what? Called LuxuryMusic.com. We heard so, about uh, that. You've been doing that for a while, and that's a weekly show, correct? Yeah. And that's um. Lux- yeah, I've, I've been doing that for as long as the the Kirkwoods got back together. I started in two thousand six. That's Lux- no wonder I didn't rejoin the band. Well, lu- <laughs> LuxuriaMusic.com. Once again, LuxuriaMusic.com. You can find uh, Derek Bostrom's weekly show there. We'd love uh, to check it out ourselves, and we will. And I love worshipers, so thank you very much for having me on, guys. I'll let you know now. <laughs> thank you so much for your time, my friend, and keep rocking, okay? Thanks so much, All Derek. Right, check Good out luck. That Exterminators album. Good night. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Rock and roll. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it, Sister Tracy. I've been wanting to talk to him on the uh, radio show for a long, long time, and I'm stoked that we had our interview with Derek Bostrom.